Hey, hey, Mark Rodriguez here. You're watching America's number one cure for insomnia, the Diving Cutter Wrestling Podcast. And with me are... Jack Knives from Jack Knives Reviews. Uh, Wendy, also Ninja Jupy, Jupy Chan, call me whatever you want. And we'll turn this over to the one, the only, the man of the hour, the man of the power, the man that actually saw the Deadpool and Wolverine movie, Johnny Rodriguez. <laughs> yep, there we go. And uh, right now we'll be doing our predictions. It's been a while, but we're going to probably do it only for like these super major events. So right now we got AEW um, All In 2024 in London, which apparently will not be in London next year and all that. So we'll do our predictions on that. But first, this is go real quick into the wrestling news. Uh, Jack Knife's got some news for us as we lost some, uh, some big uh, classic superstars here. Mm. Yes, unfortunately, now it is confirmed, um, despite any sort of shenanigans um, that are going on within the wrestling sphere, it is unfortunately confirmed that both now Afa and Sika of the Wild Samoans have passed away. For those that may not know who they are, essentially they were the penultimate tag team of the 70s, uh, pretty much holding belts all throughout the territories, the NWA, uh, even WWWF, I believe they were like pretty much like the most decorated tag team, um, essentially known around the world in the 70s. Uh, but what's their biggest legacy is also the fact that after they had retired, they actually opened wrestling schools, which ended up training some of the biggest stars figuratively and literally within the wrestling sphere. So names like Rikishi, uh, Bam Bam Bigelow, Yokozuna, Batista, all owe their training from the Wild Samoans. And that style of that uh, that explosive, big, hard-hitting style is still kind of felt a lot today. Like you watch, especially even the Bloodline, you see their style and it, it's clear that they uh, influence the youth in that style and the, the smooth transitioning of the big guys to the smooth actions in the ring and uh, Unfortunately, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a big loss for for the families. Uh, uh, our condolences out to the families. Are uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a big it's a big sad loss for the wrestling community. But it's um, you know, hey, they're they're up there in the uh, four corners in the sky, you know, with uh, with all the greats. So yeah. uh, here's to them. Yeah, it's just messed up that they died so close together, you know. Yeah, I feel the most bad for Roman because he he lost within less than a month. He lost his father, who was uh, I believe Afa, or yes, yeah, I believe Sika was his father, and then his uncle Afa, literally less than a month. And I'm like, I can't imagine what that guy must be feeling like oh man like he he just yeah. cannot i i know it sounds I, I know i know we all have this kind of notion of like yeah we got sick of him in the ring and you may have your opinions of him as a wrestler but him as a human being like you gotta feel empathy for the dude i'm like i i can't yeah i mean it's 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 just know. gotta suck man mm. yeah mm. but at least he but he does have a large family and uh you know they influenced a lot of people and i'm glad uh like i said i'm, I'm glad I'm glad their presence is felt throughout um, the wrestling sphere. And, you know, like I said, uh, you know, the one best thing about wrestling is uh, it's the worst and best thing about wrestling is uh, we feel like a family in the best and worst times. So it's like, yeah, you know, when some of some of us fall, we all kind of feel it. And it's it's it is unfortunately what it is. Um, uh I, I just like I wish I could say more about him, but it, you know we we uh, we got a lot to uh, get into in the pay per view. But as far as everything else right now, um, there's uh, the uh, pro wrestling Noah is doing their G one ver their equivalent of the G one climax, uh, uh, whereas the real G one climax in New Japan just ended with Zack Saber Jr. winning and for mm -hmm. the first time in history not cashing it in at Wrestle Kingdom, which is basically the equivalent of their WrestleMania, he instead is deciding to cash it in at King of Pro Wrestling, which is their next big pay per view, which That's ooh, January, shocked right? everybody. Isn't that in January? Nope. Yeah, no. Wrestle Kingdom is usually in January, but this year it's going to be Wrestle Kingdom is on January 4th, and then January 5th is that mega ultra super show called Wrestling Wrestle Dynasty, which is going to have 
um, New Japan, Stardom, AEW, CMLL, and um, oh, Ring of Honor, all represented mm-hmm. in basically a gigantic, epic clashing show, which I'm sure we're all going to watch. I'm eventually, <laughs> eventually down the road when it gets to it. But yeah, uh, yeah it's it's kind of weird that he didn't cash it in there. But as I was saying, also in Pro Wrestling Noah, uh, two members of NXT. Um, Josh Briggs and uh, I totally forgot his name. The other member of No Corner Catch Crew were doing really well in that tournament. And even KG Mudo himself, great Muda, even said, like, these kids are great in the ring. And that's yeah. high praise from him. <laughs> I have a quick question going back to New Japan. I know they do, they're doing some, they do some of their shows here in the U.S., right? <laughs> yes. And they, yes. And they have, they, are they, is it true that they're doing like some shows like in the D.C. area? Yes. Uh, so the next big pay-per-view uh, state side is going to be called Capital Collision. It's going to, I believe, either the the end of the month. Yeah, I think it's at the end of the month. It's going to be in Washington D.C. That's what I thought. Uh, I know. I know Mercedes Monet is defending the New Japan Strong Title, Strong Women's Championship against, I believe, Momo Watanabe of hmm. Oeda Tai. So I'm curious to see. Uh, that's gonna go. I hope. I uh, hope she uses her bat. <laughs> um, I know yeah, Leo Rush is gonna, to... and the other match is gonna be Leo Rush is going to challenge the Madman Gabe Kid from yeah. Bullet the Bullet Club War Dogs. That kid, I'm gonna say straight up, kid Gabriel Gabe Kid. That kid is like so good in the ring. Like he's solid. He reminds me of like. It's hard to hard to compare the two, but he reminds me of like, um, kind of like Big Boss Man, like how he just like poof, like beat everybody up. But like, imagine if Big Boss Man and like Mick Foley fought together, like combined. No. Like he's 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 nuts. But he's going to defend the strong belt against Leo Rush. Uh, but it's going to be a good show. I'm I'm excited for that. Right. Um, that's yeah. That's all for the news right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, that, I was just asking because I heard about that, and I forgot that New Japan does do, does do shows here, and I found out like something like DC ish and DC. So I was like, oh, I would thought most they mostly stay like maybe mid and west coast, not necessarily like going towards the east. Mm-hmm. No, nope, they try to they try to expand. Uh, they try they're trying to expand more shows east coast, but uh, it's it's more of just a venue thing. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to do the predictions. Uh, so far, we got 10 matches. Just to make it easier, we're going to go with the uh, Wikipedia order. But just to be safe, before we before we end the show, I'll just refresh to see if they snuck in any, you know, other matches in there. So uh, the first match we got here is for the Zero Hour, which is a weird one. Uh, yeah, I know. It's uh, Crit Statlander with Stokely Hathaway. Stokely Gang in the ring, okay. Going up against Little Nightingale and Tomoshiro Ishii. And I kind of feel that, oh, a mixed tag team match and the winning team will choose a stipulation of the match between Nightingale and Statlander at All Out. So we'll see what happens. And, and with All Out, we'll see what happens because I'm not a fan of paying 50 bucks for All In and then another 50 bucks for All Out like the very next week. So again, we, we may skip it again this year. I don't know. But at but, least, at least I will say, at least this time, it's like at least they seem to actually be trying to set up all out. Unlike last year, true. It's like we're just throwing a bunch of matches together and just putting on a show. Yeah, I also oh, feel oh. that they should. I also feel that for the AEW faithful, they should at least, if you're going to get all out and all in, they should do like a bundle pack. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like do a bundle pack or... pay per view of like of like let's say let's say all in is like 50 bucks and then let's say all out is another 50 bucks but they go oh but if you get them both it's 70 i'm like oh or 75 I'm like, okay that's that's fair. yeah like something like that or, or be- since all in face it is going to be the uh i mean all out i'm sorry does all out is going to be like the lesser show no matter what compared to because because all in is kind of like their new wrestlemania i guess i mean the other one should call it like the half price or some shit if you pay 50 bucks for one it should be like maybe just 25 for the other i don't know exactly but, um, yeah, but anyways, this one I feel that Chris Statlander is going to be um, carrying the team. Uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah, because I don't see Stokely doing anything. So I'm going to give it to Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to give it to Nightingale and, and, and Ishii because, you know. 
I mean, if if Chris had like some other person that comes in and help cheat on their behalf, I would give it to Chris, but I'm gonna give it to Nightingale. Mm -hmm. All right, I agree. I mean, more than likely, uh, I mean, because I haven't watched Ring of Honor or seen what's going on with Stokely and all that stuff, but I know for a fact, I don't think I've ever seen Stokely wrestle. He's I don't not a think former he's a wrestler, wrestler. Now, right? He's just a manager guy. No, he's just been a manager for all I've ever known him for. Like even in the indies, I'm like, I don't think he's ever wrestled, unless I'm mistaken. But I don't think he's ever wrestled. I th wrestled. I think he's kind of like how, um, uh, what's his name, um, Rockstar Spud was. So he's like technically a wrestler, but not really. But it's like the same thing where it's like, oh, you're more a manager than you are a wrestler. But I, I guess. I mean, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you. Go with, um, go with Willow. I mean, granted, actually, you know what? Just to be contrarian, just a little bit. I just have a feeling they might use some shenanigans, and it's also to give some variety. Let's be honest. I'm gonna say St Stokely's gonna have some sort of trick up his sleeve. Maybe throw throw some money at some big guy. I don't know. They'll introduce. They'll use. They'll use this as an opportunity to introduce some big man who's working for him or something. Sorry, I have to agree. I'm going with the Chris team because it just don't make no sense. I mean, um, wait, no, losing. Um, wait a minute. Chris's team winning would be odd unless they win by some means of cheating. <laughs> That's the only way I could um the only question I want to know is are the I don't because I'm I don't know how I know how mixed tag wrestling works in WWE, but I don't know how it works in AEW. So does that mean that the women can hit the guys? Because if that's the case, I do kind of want to see Willow do a couple like hits on Stokely because that would be funny. Although I want to well, know thing. how it's I'll always feel about the women in WWE. The women can still hit the guys, but the guys can't hit the women. And I have a feeling that yeah. it might be the same in AEW that I remember Tony Khan said he, he's not a big fan of like the but but, but but remember Julia Hart. She did get scissor. Does that count? Uh, but I don't know. I don't know how that works. I mean, I'm, I'm confused. But uh, what do you think, Johnny? Okay, about this match, honestly, I'm a widow, not can tell, faithful. So I'm definitely rooting for widow. She has to win the match. I don't know how. I don't know how she's going to do it, but she has to win it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Straight forward to the point. And I like her, I like her positive energy. I like how she, and it's a good way to start the, because that's the beginning of the pay-per-view, right? That's like the first match or something. Zero, zero, hour. zero hour. We don't know if they might have more matches, but that's a zero oh. hour match. But either way, it's still a good way to 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 get the the ball rolling, you know, make people want to, like, I guess, spend 50 bucks to watch the whole pay-per-view, you know? Mm-hmm. Plus in London, you know, that, that, that arena just looks awesome. Yeah, because I'm going for Willow's team, too, because I'm sorry, Stokely. It, it don't make sense. Anyway, and you you chose Chris's team. No, I, I still you went for Willow. Willow. And also Jack went for Willow, right? Eric, no, oh, no, Jack was contrarian. Jack is contrarian, okay. That's I, went, I went for Chris because I just feel like otherwise, like, what's the point? Like, but then again, it's AEW, so I'm not really. I don't. See, I just wanted to. I'm like normally I'd be like, oh, this is an opportunity to introduce a new guy. But then I'm like, there I go using logic. Mm. So, um, I I'll just say it just to be contrarian. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> All right, and we'll see what everyone else thinks later. Okay. Yeah, we might be adding in uh, Will Williams and, uh, and DJ. He might. Yeah. So anyways, next match we got here, or like I said, we're just going in the order of the thing here. Uh, Timeless Tony Storm versus the Glamour, or Glamour, uh, Mariah May, singles match for AEW Women's Championship. And I don't know, man. I think at this point of uh, the story, because Tony's been champ for like either a year or over a year, mm -hmm. I think this is the one. This is going to be the one where she finally loses to Mariah May so Mariah May can start her story. Because either way, Tony can still go after for payback if, if want to keep going that story a little longer. But yeah, I think this is Maya May's shot. Like finally, she's been at least built up story wise to like being under Tony and the big betrayal. So obviously, the the, the super duper ultimate betrayal is to take her title. So yeah, true. If 
if Tony, well, I'm not going to say if Tony was smart because we all know he's not. But if you had some semblance of brains, Uh-oh. he would have to use the wrestlers that he's paid all these like contracts out for and actually, you know, use them. And let's be 100% honest here. I love Mariah May. Look, I'm a huge stardom fan. You guys know that. Mm-hmm. But I remember what I said when she first joined, I said, wow, what a waste to just make her a, an entourage. Mm-hmm. Like, what's the point? And for them to not do anything with it, it, it just seems like a waste. It seems like a total waste of her character to not use her. And so, yeah, I 100% agree with uh, Mark. I believe they have to pull the trigger on her. They need to, plus the fact that the massive tidal wave of backlash from that last horrible match that Tony Storm had with Soraya, oh my God. It was so bad. Oh, the one it this was past, like this past dynamite. Or... Yeah, it was awful, like awful. Like seriously, people were pointing out like she was doing comedy spots in the middle of a title match. She was she was doing stuff that didn't make any sense. Like they were they were missing moves, like basic moves. Like oh well, uh, like she was literally like telling her, oh no, hit me, and then she'd hit her. And I'm just like, these. Did you all just forget? Like they were uh, wrestling. People were even saying they were wrestling like rookies, and I'm like, that's not no. It's bad. Well, is that so, like a sign of like Soraya because she's not really been to ring that often? Or but the thing, no, but Soraya, no. The thing, dude, I think the thing is they throw her like on rampage or so. So like, it, it's it's just... two. It's twofold. It's twofold. The first is yes, that's possible. That's a big part of it. The fact that Soraya is off TV. The bigger problem is, is the fact that since Mara, since Tony Storm has changed her character to be this, you know, this uh, 1950 or 1940s uh, uh, Hollywood s actress, she um, she had to completely change her style to slow the hell down because that's the old school style. And the fact of the matter is, her her best work was never in that style. Her best work is always been hard hitting quick hits quick hits quick hits so she has now done this rusty style so long that it's unintentionally made her rusty Mm. so it's like she she's gotten worse because she's held back so long it's like if shinsuke nakamura who's done the wwe softer style of wrestling if he were to enter into the g1 he'd be obliterated even though he's a legend in new japan because he can't wrestle that style anymore so it's the same principle when it comes to um, Tony Storm. And like I said, Soraya just, it was it was just garbage. And it's like, even the fans were like, man, she's the chick. Because this is the worst thing. It's not even a matter of the fact that it was a bad match. It's the fact that this is your champion. This is your top women's champion. And she can't even have a basic match for her title. Like, that's, that's really bad. Mm. Wow. That's a, that's something to think about. You know, in all honesty, like you you guys were saying, like, you know, they kind of build a Mariah up here. And and I think I said something similar when, you know, when she first arrived in the AEW, like when Jack was talking about how good she was at stardom. And I was like, when are they going to actually start using her so they can showcase her talent from stardom? So I'm kind of, I do, but okay, here's the question for you guys. Okay, now, uh, what's her name? Um... But the mean Mina um Shirakawa. Yeah. Do you think that she's gonna play any kind of role in this? Since she is technically I, stuck in the middle. I think this is what I would do. Okay, so they're both gonna be hometown girlies. Because this is gonna be in London. They're both from London. Mm-hmm. So well, actually, well, technically, uh I think uh I think Mariah's from Newcastle, but still, they're both from England, basically. <laughs> Um, so they, whoever, like, they're going to get a hometown reception. Now, what I would do is I would have Mariah May win the championship. Just like, yeah, her winning the belt. It's just like, yeah, I beat her. Yeah. Then Mina Shirakawa come in and Mina give her a big hug. And then they like hug each other and they raise the belt. Then Mariah attacks her setting up for a fight between those two. Mm-hmm. That's what I would do. 
but, yeah. but long term, again, that that's me long-term. trying to be creative because I think what she what and then like Tony Storm could do this whole. I need to get to back to my roots, and then her turning back into her old self, or her being broken Tony Storm, or whatever the hell they want to do. Bring in Matt Hardy, have her go. Yes, I don't know. I don't know what the hell Tony Khan's gonna do. Okay, all right. I'm going for Mariah for this one because you know it's time for Tony to do something else, probably at this point. Okay, Johnny. Okay, so personally, I think to make this match really interesting, to really spice it up, Mariah may was is this close to winning the match, but Tony Storm did some shenanigans like she cheated, so then she ends up winning the match. Mm-hmm. Like something happened in the main that so made Tony Storm wins the match. Mm-hmm. That's my thought. Because I don't know, I, I I kind of feel like people still love Tony Storm a lot, you know, the whole, you know, Hollywood gimmick. So I think mm-hmm. she, she may still win again. But to not make Mariah look so bad, they'll still, you know, give her credit where credit is due. But then, you know, Tony Storm was so cheats to win the match. Uh, mm. Another thing to that is that Tony Khan may purposely have Tony Storm retain just to piss off Jack Knives. So Jack would be like, ah! you know. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's the whole reason he showed the all-out footage. Like, uh, the brawl. Oh, I know that's uh, the whole reason. Tony Khan probably wants Tony Storm to win the match so that, um, what is it, the media scrum? Yeah. She gets her story yeah. telling Oh, Tony Khan got so embarrassed by Tony's little, like, fanfic she was reading or whatever, that Tony's like, I I'll hope you can retain, just never do that again. We all know he's scared of women, so. Uh-huh. All right, oh. so just, just, just to reconfirm here. So it seems that Mark is going for Mariah. Um, Johnny, you're going for, wait, tell, you're going for Tony, right? Johnny. Johnny's going, Johnny's going for Johnny. Yeah. Johnny's yeah. Right. I'm going for okay. I'm going for Mariah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so third match here. We can show off your shirt. We got. Oh, oh wait, who did you? Who did? Who? Who are you going for, Judy? Oh, for Mariah. Mariah. I oh, don't oh, to finish okay. up the story. You know, like you said, like maybe continue the story, see what's going to happen after that. And like I said, you never know. Maybe Tony was a bit too freaked out by that steamy, windy Richter fan fiction that was going on. Mm-hmm. Or, you know what? That match is going to end up in a three way. Just watch. Okay, okay. Anyways, we got MJF versus Will Ospreay for the AEW American Championship, which is what MJF renamed the uh, anyway the, the international Intercontin- championship. Yeah. Anyway, the international championship. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so for that one, uh, I don't. Mm. This is a hard one for me because it's like, where do they go? It would be just because MJF went through all the trouble renaming the title and shit. It would be weird to drop it so quickly, but but this is still. Will Ospreay, so I'm going to give it to Will Ospreay. We'll see what happens. Ospreay! Ospreay! Mm-hmm. Oh, great. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Ospreay and it's going to be a best of three. Because mm. MJF has already beaten him once. So it'd be kind of dumb to have him beat him twice. Mm. Especially in his hometown. So, but I don't know. I mean, it's possible. I mean, um, yeah, screw it. I'm just going to go with Osprey. Why not? I was saying if they had MJF win, that would probably put Will even more over with fans if he lost. Wouldn't you say? Because they also, because they also, this is the thing, they're eventually going to have to, because I know <laughs> I can hear, I can hear Meltzer in Tony's ear going, Tony, Tony, you got to, you got to have Ricochet versus Will Ospreay. It's going to be the greatest match of all time. You got to have that happen. The only way that will happen is if you have a title. And you know that's true. You know that's true. He would do that. And he goes, no, it's, no the best guy is Tony Khan. Mm. And it's like, no, stop it. 
So, <laughs> so I, it would make no sense for, and I think that's what they'll do. I think that's what they'll do. But I don't know I'll why, but I, I just thought of like, that, like you're gonna make MJF win, or it's curtains for you. See curtains. He put the curtains on there. So he comes. What he sounds oh, no. like. <laughs> That's what he sounds like. Listen to him. That's what he sounds like. He's like he's like a 1940s mobster, but he has no power. He's like, I'll get the wrestling community, she. <laughs> I'm going to get the wrestling community on you, she. That way you'll get no star, she. Like that's that's my that's my Dave Meltzer impression. If you want those five stars, you got to do what I say, see? Or it's curtains for you, come you on. <laughs> Oh, you don't know the power of the wrestling observer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no, no, oh, no, no. Isn't it a shame okay, sorry, but, but, that, but that Tony called the one who cares about the wrestling observer. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think, uh, but no, honestly, I think uh, realistically, I think it's going to build up more to if Osprey wins, he retains the belt. Okay, so then down the line, MJF and him could fight again, making it a best of three. W- then that will set up Osprey versus Ricochet. That's my theory. I'm trying to think I'm from go like, with Osprey. See, I'm trying to think from an AW perspective. <laughs> so don't think. They do love the flips. That's the one thing they do love is flips. Hmm. See, this is a oh god, that kangaroo kick nonsense. Oh, um, I have a hard time with this one because, like I said, it would it would be interesting if Will won because, like you said, you set up something else between them and have like you know, like I said, like a series of matches and they have like the best at the end or something. But at the same, but Will Will Ashley is talking about. I don't know. This is a hard one, especially when in doubt. When in doubt, go with your instinct and then do the opposite. That's. <laughs> That's how Tony Khan books. Okay, so I'm going with Will Osprey. Yeah, there you see, that's why I'm doing. It. It's like, oh, the obvious choice would be nope. Nope. Johnny. <laughs> okay, Johnny, your turn. I'm gonna go with Will Osprey because honestly, I mean Will Osprey is a great talent and it would be a total waste mm. if he would lose the match. Winter spiced. Yes. Versus MGF, even though apparently that stuff was good. Yeah, but so like for this big pay per view events, and is it Will also be also from England? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So he's he's from, a, he's a hometown wrestler, so they're definitely he's he's definitely going to win the match. There's no way he's yeah. going. He might do something to make MGF look good in the match, but other than that, I still think the the victor is still going to be uh, Will also. Oh, it'll be a solid match. I will give it kudos. It will probably be the more than likely a solid match because their their last match was good. But the problem is, is like I said, the biggest issue I had with the match is there was no reason to care for the match other than mm-hmm. you like these wrestlers. But now there's a reason to like the wrestlers. So now that was a reason behind it. So I'm like, okay, now we should care. Okay, now you're giving us a reason. Okay, so. Now that that's out of the way, I'm like, now you can make up for it. Got it. Okay. So now this is the next match here is the, what we call the uh, Jack Knives can't even begin to give a shit about match. We got Jack Perry, the scapegoat, versus Darby Allen. Uh, can I be a part of that group too? Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a coffin match for the AWTNT Championship. And I, I can't fucking stand Jack Perry. So I'm going to go for Darby Allen. And I hope that he goes into the coffin and whatever. I mean, eh, whatever. Let, let's see what. So it's either. Let's see who they get fired this year. The last year they got CM Punk fired. Let's see who gets fired this year. Maybe, maybe uh, fucking Lance Archer's wrong place, wrong time. He gets fired instead or some shit. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the uh, the coffin is is lined with with bulletproof glass or some shit. And and right before he slams Darby in there, he says, "Cry me a river, Darby," and throws him in there. I don't. know. Stop being such a punk and cry me a river or some shit, you know. He's gonna, he's gonna kick, he's gonna, j- Jungle Bitch is gonna kick in the bathroom when uh, Evil Uno's taking a dump and he's gonna say, You stole the purple and throw coffee at him. And then Evil Uno's gonna be like, The fuck? And he's like, You're fired. You instigated 
to fight evil Uno. We all saw it. And I'm like, what? Uh, <laughs> like, that's... Uh, so I get the choice between Jungle Bitch and Goth Turtle Kid. Okay. So like um, <laughs> I like, that's who he is. He's the Turtle Kid. It's Turtle Kid versus Jungle Bitch. So that's your choice. Both guys who combined, combined way less than half of the roster in WWE. No. <laughs> Yeah, but, both of them were under 300 pounds combined, right? <laughs> and it just so happens oh, that... <laughs> oh, oh, but, but, but Mark, you forgot, you know, the most vital, the important thing, the thing that got flooded in my feed nonstop, the most important thing, that Jack is such a man because he took his championship and forged it and added ink to make it black and then threw red paint on it because he's such a badass because he's a real man's man a real champion anyone even though anyone who knows anything about the wrestling industry knows that you as a champion don't touch your belt to modify it you hire someone because you're the guy idiot but anyway but so now we're gonna are they gonna rename the belt the goth belt because they should if they're gonna do that just call it the goth title it's literally what it is. It's 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 literally doesn't it look like a title belt on an all 100% honesty. Does the new TNT belt to anyone look like it would be sold at Hot Topic? Am I the only one who thinks that should that would be sold oh, at Hot, Hot Topic? Topic variant? And Hot Topic oh uh, connoisseur. Yeah, it's Hot Topic variant. <laughs> <laughs> you could see that belt hanging and selling at Hot Topic, can't you? It's not oh, just me. Gosh. Nothing I, against Hot I, Topic. I like them. But it fits along with it's all like it's like hey I'd like to get that new uh, TNT belt. All right, it's right over there by the uh, Haunted Mansion stuff and the uh, new Paramore album. So you know, <laughs> I just anyway, anyway, my choice. It's oh, it's a coffin match. Oh, it's a coffin match. Oh, um, it's probably gonna be Jungle Bitch. They've already invested too much time in him. Um, and, and like at this point, from what I've heard rumor uh, from the dirt sheets is that, and I'm not even joking here. The rumor is that the person who's next going to get slated for an opportunity at the world title is going to be Darby. Hmm. So that's, that's what I've been hearing in the dirt sheets. And I'm like, but why though? I mean, because they think he's such a... so I'd rather him than than fucking what's his face. I don't care crap about you. That's all I got. To, that's all I got to say. I don't care about either one of them. I hope both of them fall in the coffin and some more Joe comes and shows up and nails them in it. But get some hammer and nail, then nail both of them in it and then throw them out the building. But that's not but what I, I, I But um, yeah. So I'm just gonna go with with Jungle Bitch. That's 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 my pick. Wow. I hate both of them. I, I just don't care. I'm trying so hard to care. And I just can't. What was this match for again? The title. What title is it again? The TNT title. Oh, the one that, that nobody cares about. Yeah, and of okay. course, of course they both can't stand each other either, so it's extra, you know. Maybe they'll set each both they'll set each other on fire and then they just disqualify each other and both of them will get put in a casket. I want with uh you know what? I'm gonna be contrarian. I'm gonna say Jungle Boy because um they got me sorry because they keep they keep trying to keep all the belts on all of those guys or some you know for all that nonsense with all this elite bull crap. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the uh, Jack with this one. Even though I can't stand either one of them, I believe me, I will not be paying attention to this match. That'll be up to you if I don't let myself fall asleep on it. But you know. So for this match. This is a bit of a tough one. But maybe I'll go be the Criterion and just go with Darby Allen. Okay. You'll bury you in the match because, you know, he's always very suicidal. He's going to do something stupid, but that's going to be the thing that's going to make him more in the match. I don't know how. Don't he's going to do the coffin drop. He's going to do the coffin drop into the coffin and Barry's going to move and then Barry's going to win the match like that. 
Oh my God, I would I laugh so hard about that. that Jack Perry still has a shot in this match, but just to piss Jack Perry off, I'll just say, hey, Darby, yeah, why not? It'd be great if he I actually won. You could see Darby Allen just going like, hey, Tony, is there any way that I could add chainsaws in this match? It's like, it's it's a coffin match. I know, but I just think the crowd would really appreciate it. But why? Like, also, uh, I was thinking before uh, we could do a promo battle and then we just eat glass while we're talking to each other. You know, I just thought, you know, the crowd would really connect with that. Well, so really save that for Darby versus Moxley. <laughs> <laughs> that dart no moxley be like well i could eat i could eat this no no knowing moxley he'd be like well i could eat this asbestos or and it's like dude no one at no one fucking asked man like <laughs> no one asked <laughs> all right so uh the next match we got here is with uh mercedes monet which yeah, eventually i will buy a mercedes shirt but you know here. yeah so we got mercedes monet now with Camilla there, well, uh, Camille, I mean, which I kind of feel kind of eh, because, like, Camille went from this unstoppable champion in NWA to now being, like, a uh, Mercedes lapdog. I really hope you do the thing where eventually she'll, like, break free or something, because, you know. So, anyways, um, so, in, in other words, the way I see Camille is I would see this as bad as if... Brock Lesnar went to TNA, and he was someone else's bodyguard. You just don't do that to Camille. That's basically what they did. That's basically what they did, yeah. Yeah. So Mercedes Monet versus Britt Baker. So it's the CEO versus the DMD. And unfortunately for the DMD, the numbers are against her. So I'm going to give it to Mercedes Monet because Camille is going to be a big factor. I mean, the only thing I could see that began to wait is if Jamie Hayter doesn't surprise return on, on you know, Britt's behalf, maybe. That would be a big pop, I would assume. People have missed her, but I, I don't know. So with the numbers stacked against her, I'm going to go with the DM, well, I mean, with CEO. And, of course, because apparently, I think you mentioned before, the Mercedes actually had backstage control, backstage whatever. And, of course, she got Free paid control, load. Yeah. So she ain't going to be taking all that money just to drop the title so quickly, so... Yeah, no. There's going to be Mercedes. Yeah, I mean, probably. I mean, it's going to be... It's basically... So, between the CEO... It's CEO versus DMD, and the fans are going to say RIP, because it's going to be BAD, and they're all going to be ZZZ. So, you know, it's just going <laughs> to... I'm sorry. It was too easy. I had to do it. Anyway. But but uh, I th- I'm sorry it was too easy. Um, I just hey, know I'm there's like, nothing wrong with speaking the truth here. We 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 value honesty. It's Rick really Mark? funny because oh. I'm like I'm like I didn't okay. I'm trying. I really am trying, despite what people think. I am trying not to be negative all the time. I'm really not. But it's so hard when it's so easy. <laughs> it's so obvious, but oh, um, I I actually did sit down and watch AEW for once last week, and I watched the promo battle between them. And my God, it was like two middle school theater kids reading a script with cue cards. It was so awful. It's just like, ah, oh, you grew up watching me. And so yeah, everything to me. No, I was here first. Ah, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what it felt like the whole time. I'm like, really? This is your top women's wrestlers? Okay, okay then. All right, but I, I, I just, I'm like, between, I just. I hate saying this, and knock on wood if I'm wrong, but the sad truth of it is, Mercedes, throughout his whole her whole wrestling career, has been an extreme. People forget before Nia Jax made it popular to be a botch machine, Sasha was doing that shit way before her. I mean, yeah, this is the same girl is. who broke. But here's the thing. And, 
Her botches though uh crush you don't crush you. I mean, unless you go towards your neck like poor no, no, no. age. But the here's the difference between Naya, Naya would hurt other people. Sasha would always hurt herself. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She was a self-inflicting botch machine. And yet Britt Baker also has a series of injuries. So knock on wood, I hope I'm wrong. My hope is that no one gets severely hurt in this match because it is like a tornado. It's, it, it feels like someone throwing a lit box of fireworks in a tornado at this point for me. And I'm worried it's going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> and I... I hope I'm wrong. Hope I'm wrong. But if I were to put a gun to my head, who I think is going to win, what Mark said puts a big factor into it, the creative control. But I think, knowing Mercedes, she'll probably have Britt Baker lose, and then she'll insert herself as the number one contender for the women's title. Mm. Okay. Okay, I can um, see that happening. Yeah. All and right. then later, that's my theory. So I think it's going to go to Britt Baker. That's that's my theory. So you really think? Okay, so wait, other way around. I think she's got. I think Britt is going to win. Only be, so that way Sasha could. Uh, I'm sorry, Mercedes could go after the women's title. So mm -hmm. that's what I think is going to happen. But this is a TBS championship. No, I know. I'm saying she's going to drop the TBS belt to then go after the women's title. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. It's kind of uh, in the same way that it, it kind of in a parallel right now, a little bit of a parallel, but right now uh, I even predicted this happening and I was right. I, uh, any of the, any of the listeners or watchers who have watched NXT recently know that Tony D'Angelo, who's one of the best wrestlers they got, he lost the Heritage Cup, which was a pro wrestling trophy slash championship that they had. And I said, if he loses it, it's because he wants to go after Oba Femi because they're planting seeds of them fighting. Oba Femi is the North American champion. And sure enough, he drops the belt two weeks ago. And then last week, he came out to challenge Oba Femi. So I was right. And so now the next match at No Mercy is going to be NXT No Mercy is going to be Oba Femi versus Tony D. So I think the same thing's going to happen with Mercedes. She's going to drop the TBS, then go after the women's title. Um, yeah. Get out. Go away. <laughs> anyway, um... I don't like you right now. <laughs> anyway. Okay, go on with the world side. Oh, you're a your No, you're a distraction. Get out of you. Anyway, no. I what like, do you think? I like how Jack is the contrarian here and the logic behind Jack's um, prediction here, which would be interesting. But I don't know. Can you, I mean, you, I would, it would be interesting seeing, like, you know, a world maker so when yeah it would be interesting and then you know and she getting the world the world title scene with that you know she drops the title like jack was saying if she if she i am also i don't want to I'm say also, that oh it's gonna say real quick if mercedes does win expect the background crowd to be all like this around her and stuff if she's like you know winning dancing whatever yeah. Because I, I think more than likely what will happen is knowing her creative control and her ego, it will be more than likely that she will win a title or more than likely go after a bigger championship, which would be probably at that big show in uh, January, that Wrestle Dynasty or whatever. Mm. Like maybe she'll go after the Stardom Championship. I don't know. And then also, it'll probably look better for her to enter that as a champion, like, like you know, still having her title with her, you know? Yeah. Well, Because I, if you introduce her as the TBS championship, people aren't going to know what the hell that is. Oh. Unless you know the product. But if you're the world, if you're the women's championship, everyone's like, oh, well, clearly she's the best of the women's division. 
Mm. Well, I'm going. I'm, oh, sorry. I was going to say that I'm just going for Britt Baker. I just can't stand Mercedes. I just can't stand her like at all in any way, shape, or form. Honestly, I just oh, she's annoying. I wish she'd go away. But anyway, yeah, I'm going for Britt just for that reason alone. And I already know Johnny's choosing Britt, so I don't even have to write it down. So oh, go ahead, Johnny. Okay, so I'm definitely going to root for uh, DMD. She has to win a match just for the fact that um, it's like they could go behind the story <laughs> that it's like her big comeback because, first of all, she hasn't fought in months. Second of all, she just got out of that suspension, so they can make a big deal out of, hey, despite all the obstacles, I'm still DMD just yeah. for that reason alone. Yeah, plus didn't she just come back from like a having a mild stroke or something? Yeah. Oh, so, I don't know one, but, yeah, that's uh, why cool. she was Yeah, that's why she was out. She was having um she it was like weakness in the wing ring or something. It turned out she had, was having mini yeah. strokes and that's why she had Yeah, so it could literally it, it could literally be both as like a hero versus villain kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's something else I think I wish would happen because you know like Mercedes has Camille. I really wish that Jamie Hayter was back. I miss her. Like, what happened to her? She's like milk yeah, carton. Injury, injury. Yeah. yeah, no, but we never found out what her injury was. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it was. also there's a lot of behind the scenes things that um, Britt Baker and her in real life really had a falling out. Well. Yeah, but if it's a job, I mean, that's your job. Too bad, you know. Yeah, you all, to, you all, to, like, <laughs> we can't. But then again, it's AEW and everyone is just petty as hell. So you know, I mean, apparently they, they don't understand that 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 part of it. You know, even if you don't like someone, you're still supposed to work professionally with the other for the sake of the company that you are working for and the audience that you're seeing. You know, it's just so uh yeah, yeah. they sound like a bunch of little brats. It's almost like it's Punk was right. Oh my god. Yeah. Listen to him. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna skip the next one. The next one is the Casino Gauntlet. Which uh, is wait, right now that has Orange Cassidy, Mark Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Page, Evil Luna, Roderick Strong, and they're all going for future AEW World Championship matches. A world championship yeah, match. So are there still like TBAs in there, probably? Not that I've seen, no. Mm. I mean, there could be more later, I guess, but that's all I have here. I mean, unless it got updated again. Yeah, I yeah, we could just. We, yeah, I, I don't think that one should count because like gauntlet matches are hard to read because they're gonna always be like. So yeah, well, no, 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 no. What's gonna happen is Roger Strong's gonna win, win because he's gonna uh knee, knee everybody in the head and knock them out for the rest of the year, like it's like um like Dalton Castle. Oh. But yeah, we'll skip that one. Okay. It's just too unpredictable. But whoever wins that one gets a future AEW World Championship match. So the next one we have here is Jericho with Big Bill in the background uh, going against Hook. And it is a last chance match for the FTW Championship. So if Hook loses this one, he can never challenge for that title again as long as Jericho, hold on, as long as Jericho to the champ. Can I make a comment on that? No respect for Jericho. Screw Chris but Jericho. Before you make that comment, but respect Chris Jericho. Jericho need to stay backstage. That's all I got to say. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm sorry. The FTW Championship, it's just no point to it. It's a pointless belt. But, but, but it's, it's for, what is it for? It's the Waddle Dog Championship. Screw the Waddle Dog. I'm sorry. It's just such a pointless championship, and I hate the fact that Hook got drawn into this nonsense. He got he, drawn into the Jericho Vortex. Fortunately, he deserves better than this nonsense that they are putting him through. It is hurting my soul to see this and having Hook having that throw out. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. No, but seriously, it's just so pointless. I don't care about this match in any way or form. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying you don't care about that match? That doesn't work for me, brother. Uh, he's got it. That, I, okay, that was actually good. No, but seriously, it's just so ugh, it's frustrating. And look at it. Act right. like he cares. I mean... Oh, okay. He can't get his title back. I mean, they already ruined it in a way. I mean... And it never it was never taken seriously, so why bother with making it a serious thing now? 
Mm. That's, I mean, I just see any, no rhyme or reason or logic behind this whole unnecessary thing. I know Jericho is trying to get people over, but this is not working. Okay, so who are you going with? Oh. I think Jericho's going to retain. And then who can go actually do something better than this stupid nonsense? Yeah. Now, another thing, if there are any rumors of Hook leaving or something, that would be his way out. Since he can't change the title anymore, I would give it I a think this is, it's coming up to the point where it's like, I think he's in the same boat as Jay White. They're just waiting out their contracts. Mm. So, so I, that's, I mean, <laughs> this is what I refer to as evidence. <laughs> like, this is evidence matches of like, well, why did you why did you leave? They treated you so good. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and hmm. Like that that's that's I mean like everyone goes like the same thing with Cody. Well, I would well, I would Cody leave. I mean they treated him like a god there. I'm like, did y'all motherfuckers forget that he threw his belt and y'all kept throwing it back? That you hated him? Did you just blank on that part? Or the fact that he was forced into a stipulation where if he lost, he could never challenge for the world title and he lost? Like, or that he had creative control taken away from him, or, or not creative control, or uh, backstage privileges taken away from him? No, no, you're just you're just a fed mark, me. And it's like, no, I'm just a practical human being who has common sense. So I resemble that remark. But... <laughs> <laughs> The but longer anyway, Hook is there, the no turtles Hook is forever. There, no turtles forever. I'm going for the long. The longer <laughs> Hook is there, the worse it's going to be for his career. It's as simple as that. Mm. All right. On that note, who you're going for for this match? Jericho. Obviously, it's going to be Hope. It's going to be Chris Hogan. I know he's going to win. He's going to come out and he's going to be like, "Well." What you gonna do? And it's like I know I probably shouldn't mention him. I, I'm not gonna mention him ever again. But yeah, basically he's he's gonna be like that in the sense of like he's already been like that. And it's like this idea. I love the idiot idea of oh Jericho's doing this to get over the younger talent. No, the fuck he's not. He's a he's a talent vampire. That's all he's ever been. He associates himself with bigger, better talent, and then he goes like he's he's literally like a a leech going, <laughs> aren't I great, guys? <laughs> and it's like, no, stop. Stop, you Canadian weird fucking mistake. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. No, no, no. Stop. Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> exactly. It's like, stop it. Get some help. Like, that's literally him. That's him 100% in a nutshell. And I'm like, and everyone's just like, <laughs> it's so funny how it takes all of this for people to realize, like, Wow, so you're saying Chris Jericho is a piece of crap? It's like, dude, there are hundreds of people that have said he's he's like that. But I'm like, nah. and don't forget, but and, I said, and, and, and people in hospitality, you know, there a lot of those people don't like him. They see the Jericho, is, they see Jericho coming up. They say, oh no, but I'm saying they, 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 they lock their windows. Yeah, they lock the doors. Like, so like, 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 like in his most recent interview, he did. He said the words, I wrote it down too. I, I, he wrote, he said something along the lines of, um, when people watch me, he's like, I constantly hear people saying, we, uh, please retire, please retire. But they're not saying that at me. They're saying that because I have such heel heat. They don't actually want me to hear me, re- want me to retire. I hear countless times people telling me I'm a once in a generational talent. And then I'm elevating the industry as we speak. Look at the ratings. They're raised every time I'm on screen. I'm like, what level of delusion are you living in, bro? You can't talk about the ratings when your ratings are under your, you're getting closer to ratings lower than TNA. And I'm like, and you're like, I'm the key demo. No, no, you're not. Stop it. So no, he's, he's, he's going to win. He's going to retain and we're going to be stuck with it. And then, and then they're going to rinse and repeat because they did the same thing with the ring of honor belt. They're going to do the same thing and then have him lose it. And then no one's going to care. And then Hook's going to be gone. So that's what's going to happen. If he ends up in NXT, I really will start watching NXT again. I already want to start watching for uh, Stefan and now, uh, for what's the name. Now I really want to start if Hook gets um, Julia. ends yeah. up over there. 
Mm-hmm. I would suggest starting this uh, this weekend is No Mercy. It's going to have Joe Hendry challenge for the NXT Women uh, World Championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, Johnny, your thoughts uh, or your pick? Okay, so personally, I'm not a big fan of this match. My personal bias, I would say Hook. I would prefer Hook to win this match versus Chris Jericho. But unfortunately, since there's a lot of rumors that Hook may, you know, want to leave AEW once his contract expires, I don't know. It's just probably easier for him to just lose the match to kind of give him reason to leave AEW a lot more, you know. Because okay. why, why even like try at this point if he doesn't want to be there, and Tony Khan treats him like ugh, you know, like crap, like how Tony yeah. Khan treats a lot of his wrestlers. Um, That's the whole thing. If he loses this match, he's not allowed to change anymore for it. Yeah, so that would be an easy exit way out, actually. If, mm-hmm. if match. Okay. All right. So now for the one that that uh, one you've been waiting for. Hmm. The uh, next match here, if I can find it, because it's my muscle. Close. Where my media scrum muscle? Yes, the dumb fucks, Matt and uh, Nick Jackson, going up against FDR, going up against the acclaimed. Okay, so it's a three way, three way tag no, team match for the oh, AEW yes, uh, World Tag Team Championship. Hmm. And right off the bat, I, mm, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go for FTR. I don't know if they're going to win it or not because they've already been tacking chance for a while, but whatever. Fuck it. I'm going to give it to FTR because the claim is acclaimed and the Young Bucks, I'm kind of like anyone but the Young Bucks. Like, like if it was the Young Bucks versus like Private Party in the Dark Order, I would choose Private Party or the Dark Order because I just, just enough with the damn dumb fucks, you know? Yeah. I was just saying, I'm going for FTR too. I mean, whatever. I don't give a crap about this match. It's just going to be FTR. But I feel sorry for FTR because we kind of screwed over all this time anyway. I mean, it's like, I used to really, really care about FTR. Now I don't. I don't like that. Yep. It's almost like, like the they tarnished their legacy. It's almost like they tarnished their own legacy. Oh my god. And not only that, but now Cash is becoming another Moxley. He gets like accidentally sliced up every other match. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I think. I think that FTR since the CM Punk podcast have, you know, they've earned because they've done enough rah-rah, we like wrestling we're real wrestling rah rah speeches that i feel that they've ju- earned just enough punch cards to get a title so um you know that's my theory is that uh khan is basically gonna, gonna treat them winning the belt as if it's a froyo uh place and like oh you've entered you've uh you've done enough speeches to earn yourself the tag title so here you go there you go ftr and they go Thanks. Did we mention this is where real wrestling happens? Real wrestling. Real. I'm like, we get it. Shut up. But but what about the real wrestling? Didn't that guy hump that dude's face for like five minutes in that match? Real wrestling. If you don't sound all right. And I'm like, okay, all right. So yeah, that for that reason, I'm gonna give it to FTR. They earned enough punch cards in their Froyo card. For their for their raw raw speeches to get a title, so that's my reason. So, yep, yeah. it's funny how they ended up standing with CM Punk and then turned into complete corporate stooges. It's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you think, Johnny? Um, I'm gonna go with you guys. I think at TR, I would rather them win compared to the Young Bucks. Of course, the Young Bucks are so bad that even. I would have even preferred our, their claim to win the match. But but honestly, I think FTR, they're a much better um, tag team. You know, they're actual, like, legit wrestlers. They're not doing weird gimmicks all the time. They're not doing the Sesame Daddy and all the weird um, controversial rap that uh, Max Caster always seems to do. Like, after a while, his rap starts to get kind of old. So... It is what it is, but honestly, I, I would still prefer FTR to win this match. Okay. 
Oh, wait, hey, gotta... real quick, real quick. Why, why is the breakfast title not being defended? Uh, it got renamed. You remember, MJF called it the All American Title, whatever. No, 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 not that one. The one. It's that it's one. It that one? It's hot and middle tight. The breakfast, yeah, the continental title. What? No, what was the one? What was the one, what was the one that them, did MJF renamed? International. It, international. They had the inter international title. Well, wasn't it? Wasn't that MJF? No, no. no. The international MJF. Title is MJF has. The, he had MJF had the international title, then he turned called it the American title. But Okada yeah. has the Continental or Breakfast title. Oh, oh he, didn't he lose it recently? I don't know. We were asleep. He went up. All I know Okada. is he was gonna have a feud with. Uh, I heard he was gonna have a feud with Castanoli. Yeah, he had that match on Wednesday with Okada. Um, um, yeah, uh, he had a match against him. I'm sorry. There oh, was... I thought that was, I thought that was getting built to all in. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, that was a title match, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. And Okada, no, Okada was... still, yeah, no, he still won it. I remember because the young bus came in like, oh, too bad you lost, Claudio. Well, better luck next time. So, so that means that yeah, he didn't, he didn't win it. Oh, okay. Then. So Okada still not... the the Continental Breakfast Champion. Beach. Yeah, but I, that's why I don't understand why it's not being defended here. Because, wow. like, it's your big show. Shouldn't you be defending it? But maybe it's a traveler's visa thing. Ah, mm. So, anyways, here's the, here's the next one. This is the uh, this is the match that we throw everyone together so everyone, is, like, they're still employed. Thanks, kind of we're here. Yep. It's the four-way London ladder match for the AEW Trio Championship. So it's going to be the Patriarchy, Christian Cage, Kill Switch, and Nick Wayne with Mama Wayne there versus the Bang Bang Gang, Juice Robinson, Austin, and Colton Gunn versus, oh, my God, this team went back. Uh, the House of Black, Monica Black, Brody King, Buddy Matthews, and Pac with Blackpool Combat Club, Claudio and Wheeler, which shows that, um, yeah, the Lucha Bros are MIA, man. I mean, so oh, for this oh. one, God, I, don't mm. care. <laughs> I just don't care. I'm gonna give it's it gonna to be House. Black. Of, no, I'm gonna give it to House of Black for me because of the fact that I think, to shock of a lot of people, Brett Buddy Matthews just re-signed with AEW because everyone assumed he was gonna go to WWE. Mm. But uh, yeah, I think he just re-signed. So I think. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I know he re-signed, and then Alistair Black's re-signed. So. Or uh, Malachi Black resigned. I don't know about Brody King though. Mm. I don't know his status situation, but I think it would make sense for them to win. Yeah, I'll give it to Health of Black too. They seem to be the most, you know, as well. Cohesive. Yeah. <laughs> Cohesive. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, like they were the last champions I think anyone actually gave a shit about. Granted, I love the Bang Bang. I love I love Jay White, but he's they've tur relegated him into a joke mm -hmm. and then they've turned austin and juice robinson also into jokes or austin colton and juice well austin and colton were already fucking jokes they turned juice into a joke more than he already was mm -hmm. okay i don't see what tony storm sees in juice yeah he's got a huge pistol. he's got huge pistol fingers no uh -huh. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. Oh, so you say you rock hard, eh? <laughs> oh, they're very interesting, doll, and interesting. Jolly but you know. Anyway. They need to tag team together and call themselves timeless juice. Call themselves that. <laughs> I'm um okay. I'm going with House of Black. I'm just going with House of Black. Johnny <laughs> had no reason. I'm just going with House of Black. Me too. I'm also going to go with House of Black. Uh, I'd rather them win the match compared to uh, Pac and the Black Pool Comeback Club. I'm tired of Claudio Simeone at this point. And I'm just tired of the patriarchy. I mean, Christian Cage, Killwitch, and Nate, Nick Wayne with his mom. Like, I'm just tired of the. <laughs> just cut that shit out. Like, that shit gets old out there. The thing is, I, I don't it's... see Pac them winning because that would mean well, that, like if they won, let's say they won, would that mean that Pac would now be part of the Blackpool Combat Club? 
I wouldn't want that. And, you know, the only problem is it seemed like this would have been originally booked for Pac with um the Lucha Bros, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, which but, mem which members of the Blackpool Combat Club are in it? Is it Oh um, Mavio and Yuna. Yuna. So where the fuck is Moxley? He maybe he gone with glass wrong one day. Mm -hmm. Maybe he stabbed himself in the ball with a slice of with a piece of glass and realized that you're not supposed to actually do that. So now he's dealing with that. How did you read? My, how did you read my wish list? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But honestly, I'm like, I'm like, so wait a minute. So Juice is stepping in for Jay White. The Blackpool Combat Club is stepping in for the Lucha Brothers, mm -hmm. and Pac is stepping in, for, subbing in for John Moxley. Yep. So the whole match is just made up of subs. Uh -huh. There's only two teams in the whole fucking match. Pretty <laughs> much. Also, I do feel it. I feel horrible for Nick Wayne, honestly, because I'm like, dude, I love a kid. I don't know who. Who told you it was a good idea? But I don't give a fuck what title you win. You're never, ever, ever going to get over with any wrestling crowd with your mom. It's not going to fucking happen. I don't give a shit what champion you are. If Cody Rhodes, as the world champion, walked to the ring every night with his mom, everyone would go like, wow, that's lame. Am I wrong? No. 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 Am I ever wrong? No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah. So I am um, yeah, House of Black's gotta win it. Cause like, dude, you gotta have you gotta reestablish like this is your last show in London. You already you already screwed the pooch multiple times. You know, unless you're gonna double down on your dumbass booking or lack thereof, but you know. I don't know. But like I said, it's just... Anyway, that's my theory. Anyway. So now we got the main event here, and it's going to be um, Swerve Strickland with Prince Donna going up against Brian Danielson for the... Uh, it's a title versus career match for AEW. So either Brian Danielson wins the title or he, he'll... Uh, well, he'll retire. He'll, he'll call it a career and retire... If he doesn't win this match. And given Tony Khan's booking and given his uh, previous experience with, with Sting, despite the fact that Daniel Bryan, where the American Dragon is going to quit sometime this year anyway due to injuries and a whole bunch of stuff, I would not be surprised if he won the title now just to drop it in a month or so and of course, because we all know Tony Khan's a huge fan of Dragon Ball, most likely, he'll make another tournament <laughs> for the vacancy after that. Because that's the thing, too, because I think that if this was like a real, real final match, they, wouldn't, wouldn't the advertising, wouldn't this have been built a lot differently, though? That's that's the problem with this. And, I kind of and, feel that if it was his last match, the pay per view would be, you know, kind of like the Sting one, right? It would be like a big, you know, the next pay per view is my final match, and they, they would have, you know. Well, here's the thing. Um, it's actually the exact opposite. So what it is is right now is they are doubling, tripling, quadrupling down. Yeah. On that, not only is this Danielson's last match, he may never wrestle again. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, they the amount of effort they put into going, Danielson's going to lose is almost comedic at this point. Because, like, that, not only have they had podcasts with Danielson where he's now claiming, now all these reports coming out that he's he's – his contract ended last week. And so now all of these matches are done off contract and yin, 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 yin. I'm like, really? So in your mind, he's doing this for free. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I said, then, then they got his doctors and his doctors say, Oh, he's just dealing with so many injuries. We just don't know if he'll ever really be able to wrestle again. And it's just, 
it's just so hard for him. And, and, and I'm like, okay, okay. Y'all have been building this way too much. Way more than... I, I get what he's trying to do. And I had a discussion with uh, Ninja Panda about this too. <clears throat> They're trying to build it. Like the streak versus career match with Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. But here's the difference with that. Here's the difference with that build and why it worked so well. The reason it worked so well is because you had equal antes. You had equal things up for grabs. Let's let's be let's put cards 100% on the table here. What would happen if Swerve lost? So I guess I mean if Swerve loses, he drops his title. But I mean I I don't know. I just feel bad because he didn't he didn't like he wasn't champion for a long time. You know what I mean? But uh, mm-hmm. it's not the same. Like, but I'm saying career. Like he'll just like leave. Like I'm right. saying he will. Right. I think I think he would. But I think uh, down the road he'll probably get another shot later. But I'm saying that's my point. I'm making is like the fact that. There's not equal antes. So, like, what I would have done, I have a little fantasy booking here, what you should have done is you should have booked it as if Swerve loses, he can never challenge for a title again. Mm. That way it would add equal antes because we know how the struggles he went to to become the world champion. So if they did that, then I'd be like, oh, this could go either way. But now that they're building it, it's either going to go one of two ways. Either it's going to be this is Danielson's farewell, which, I mean, hell, they've done everything. I mean, they did the Green Day time of your life montage video of his Ring of Honor career. And then they're like, Arr. and they're like all this crap and having him go up and saying like how the greatest wrestlers he's ever fought are in AEW, which is bullshit. And then, and then, uh, and, or, and then actually have him go and leave and ride off in the sunset or more than likely it's all a swerve. I mean, that's the obvious answer. That's the obvious choice. Or they could do what you and I probably think are going to happen, Mark, which is that it's a giant swerve and Danielson's going to win the belt. And then the crowd's going to go in a big pop and go, whoa, oh my God, it's not the championship, oh my God. And then maybe he'll win it for, hold it for maybe about two months. And then, uh, yeah, and then uh, he'll probably hold it and then maybe lose it at that show, that Wrestle Dynasty or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's, that's they, more they than build up the thing because that's going to be a farewell match or whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, hell... And it would actually kind of make sense because, like, if they're going to do what I think they're going to do, and the reason I brought up the G1 earlier is if Zack Sabre Jr. wins against Tetsuya Naito, it will be his first ever world championship he's ever had, and he'll be the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. And then what they could do is at Wrestle Kingdom ha- or at Wrestle Dynasty have a champion, have basically as... Danielson's final match, you know, and then they'll do a tournament later or whatever, have his final match against Zack Sabre Jr. Because the fans already know their record stands right now at one and one. Mm. And it is always been who's the best technical wrestler, who's the best technical wrestler. And this would be the definitive answer to that. And that's what I think they should do. That's what I would do if I were fantasy booking this. But again, if I'm going to go off of that wishful thinking, I'm going to say Danielson's going to win. But that's wishful thinking. But what do you guys think? Well, I'm going with Swerve because, like you said earlier, you should think about it within logic and reason. And that actually makes sense. So I'm going with Swerve. Because it just, I mean, you know, because what Jack just said and what you were saying, it makes sense for Danielson to win. But I think Swerve is going to win. And also, I also going by the logic, like, um, just in a general sense, yes, I promised my children I wouldn't wrestle anymore. Look kind of bad if he actually does continue to wrestle after that. I mean, that would make him look like a jerk. 
And I don't think Danielson want to go out looking like a jerk. I mean, right? I mean, I can guarantee one. I could pretty much guarantee one thing, though, more than likely, is that Brie is going to be in the crowd. Mm. I can almost guarantee, regardless of what it is, Brie's going to be there. And it's like, it's going to be a touchy feely moment okay. or whatever. My God. Here's, here's, here's what I think is going to happen if Swerve wins. I think Swerve is going to beat him. Okay, probably get a little dance there. But I think Swerve is going to beat him. But instead of doing it like in a heelish kind of way, he's going to like show his respect towards him because he actually admit, you know, because he said did that promo like weeks back. Like, I do have respect for you, but, you know, I still want to hold on to my title. You know, that kind of attitude. Because mm -hmm. he don't seem to have any actual personal beef with Danielson himself, you know, not like that last oh, promo he did. Oh, that last remember promo that he beat the crap out of that, you. Like, there's an example of what's gonna happen. That last, that la no, that that last, that last, that last promo he did. No, he was really personal. He was like bringing up some shit about how he wants to put oh, Danielson yeah. in a wheelchair so he can't hold his kids and stuff. It's like, oh, see, oh, he's trying to intimidate yeah. him, you know, so he go <laughs> with his family. Go home and be a family man. Yeah, be a family man like you promised your children you would be. Stop getting concussions and neck issues and go home with your family. Stop that wrestling. I'm here to help you and your family, to bring you guys together. Yeah, well, who am I kidding? This is the same dude that broke into Adam Page's house and was terrorizing babies. <laughs> top heat, top baby face move there top baby face move what do you think johnny good Tony Khan booker personally i think swerp is gonna win this match he's just i don't know he's just i mean a lot of people like him he's a fan favorite and i wouldn't mind swerp winning this match especially at the all in in london like holy shit that's gonna be spectacular so hopefully uh swerp wins this match Mm. He needs it more than Brian Danielson at this point. Yeah, in this case, though, that that remember that he, he loses, he's gone. So, are you ready to say goodbye? Yes, to uh, Daniel Bryanson. Yes. I am. Yes. Yes. I love how everyone's like, "Yes, leave, go." I mean, it's sad that he has to go, but at this point, his health is more important than wrestling. He really does need to go. And, you know, that could be the perfect excuse for him to leave because, you know, he does have health issues. So why not make this match, you know? Is, you know, the best thing you the, the only mat The only way the match could be better is if it's like Danielson going, if I lose, I have to retire. And if Swerve loses, Jericho has to retire. I'm like, yes, go Swerve! Go! Swerve! Go! Yes, yes! But then Jericho would be like, that doesn't work for me, brother. Yeah. Who are you calling brother? Um, <laughs> no. So anyways, guys, I just refreshed the page a couple of times. Nothing new has been added. Um, as of right now, live, as of filming, like they say, it's uh, like a little past 1030, and Rampage is, you know, usually on at 10. So I guess they haven't announced any matches or any whatevers or things like that. So we nothing collision. Well, we do have collision tomorrow too. Yeah. So. so we probably won't do a video of it, but we'll add the last minute predictions as well as whatever William might add and whatever DJF might add when we do the actual review and everything. But uh, yeah, I think we pretty much covered all of them and see what happens here. I, I just all right. this is just gonna be so weird. Mm. That zero match. Now, question uh, now, I asked it before. I'm asking it here for everyone in the audience and for everyone at home, uh, for everyone watching, and for everyone in this panel. Do you think, looking at this card, that this is a stadium worthy show? Uh, I don't know. Not really. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> not really. And I can point out examples why. Okay, let's see. Looking at this, <laughs> the, the car here, um, the zero match seems ridiculous, but that doesn't count. I guess Tony versus Mariah, that's okay. MJF versus Will Ospreay, definitely stadium worthy. Perry versus Allen, no. Mercedes versus Britt Baker, 
<laughs> sort of. I mean, it's like, I mean, come on. I mean, because it's Britt Baker, yeah, but it's because it's for a TBS championship. So to me, it's kind of, you know. Let me see. The Casino Gauntlet, don't give a crap. Uh, Jericho versus Hook, definitely no. That's Rampage level. I'm sorry. Um, Young Bergs versus FTR and their claims for that tag team championship. Perhaps, I guess. It's it's your it's the portion of the flippy shit required for me, W. Yeah, we don't got the Lucha Bros. And then the, that patriarchy versus the Bang Bang Game versus no, that should that should be fine for a non. That should be like collision. That should be collision or dynamite levels for a world championship type um, match. So then that should be on the pay per view, not the precursor for a pay per view, unless they nope. win the championship match at All Out or something. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will say is that this, uh, if you rewatch the promo that <laughs> that Will Ospreay said to MJF. Yeah, last, bro. No, he said a line, which is true. He's all like, when, he's all like you had London disappointed in the main event of All In, bro. And it was. It was supposed to be two of the best professional wrestlers main eventing, but it was just two blokes jerking each other off. And I'm like, he's not wrong. That's literally what it was. So, and I'm like, I'm thinking, it ha the main event has to, has to be better than the last year's main event. It has to. Yeah. Because that was the single worst main event I've ever seen in my life. In my 30 plus years of watching wrestling, that was the worst single main event I've ever seen. Um, yeah, with Swerve versus Daniel Bryan, they're going to they're gonna bring the house down. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, that's the only silver lining. I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, it's, at least I can know it's going to be at least a good match and an actual match. That's mm -hmm. that's the only plus I can look forward to. I'm like, yay. So uh, yeah, yeah, some of the other, other matches on the card, it isn't to me, it's not that pay-per-view level. It's just, it could yeah. be, like, weekly show level, especially, like I said, the that that champion, the one for that tag, that world title shot or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that should be on regular. That's that's free TV worthy. Mm -hmm. The actual world title match itself can be pay-per-view worthy, but not the, yeah, you know, the Remember, but they gotta teams. fill, but you gotta fill up the car too, and not, yeah, you know, and maybe we always have to have at least one match where it's kind of like throwing the kitchen sink in there so that all these guys are in there, you know. That's what the zero hour is for. Yeah, that should be a zero hour match, not a paper, not for the main, main show, mm. in my opinion. But yeah. again, they might put it there. Cause I mean I, I don't think Stone can go that long in the ring. I'm just saying. I um, mean it's gonna be a sort of like a short. Match. Oh I know it probably will be. I mean he's no Bobby the Brain Heener. Yeah I'm gonna wrap it up for now. I did a refresh. Still no matches added, but like Wendy says, uh, we'll see what happens. This collision might add a last minute, you know, whatever mm -hmm. for the pre-show most likely. So yeah, that wraps up for this episode of the uh, America's Number One Cure for Amazonia, a Diamond Cutter Wrestling Podcast. If you have uh, trouble sleeping, you're having shakes. Your, uh, you know, the eyes are kind of fuzzy and stuff because you're having, like, serious sleep deprivation problems. Just put on our podcast and knock it right out. But don't listen to it while you're driving. It, it could cause accidents. You can fall asleep at the wheel. So oh, I like your family guy. Yep, there you go. So this is uh, Margaret Drieger signing off. Jack Knives from Jack Knives Reviews signing out. This is... Ninja Jupy, also known as Jupy Chan, or you just call me Wendy. Now turn this over to the one, the only, the man of the hour, the man with the power, the man who's too sweet to be sour, Johnny Rodriguez. All right, see you next time, guys. See you next time.